Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of An Entrepreneur's Journey. Today, we have with us Vanel Francis of Quap Clothing. All right. So I'm just going to let him introduce himself. So Vanel, tell us a bit about yourself and your business. Well, as, um, as everyone already known um, about the introduction, my name is Vanel Francis. Um, I'm a clothing brand owner. Well, more of like a, a t-shirt brand um own and everything like that. Well um first I'm gonna start by saying um talk a little bit about myself. Well I grew up in um St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You know, most people know it as the you know a little island, but it's an island of joy, you know, prosperity and so on and so forth. Well growing up in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know, everyone is looking for opportunity and a way out to make their self, you know reach to a point and and so on and so forth, like doing great things with their life and and so on. Uh I started my clothing brand uh well in St. Vincent, you know. So having my clothing brand is one of um you know a big success towards, you know, greater values towards life and so on and so forth. You know, um well what can I uh, what can I say about myself? Mm -hmm. Uh I'm humble, easygoing, you know, uh, caring, loving person, you know, I would say I'm easy to talk to, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I would just characterize myself as humble. Yeah. yeah that, that's what, that's what I would characterize myself as a humble person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That covers, that covers every aspect of what I just said a while ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I would definitely agree with you in terms of being a humble person because um spoke to, I've spoken to you some time about before the, the time I um reached out to you to get on the podcast and then I spoke to you when I wanted you to get on the podcast and you were yeah. very welcoming and humble, you know, easy to talk to and, you know, I appreciate that. So definitely a good um trait of an entrepreneur as well. Um, Thank you so much. For and, you know, that. I like the fact that you have um your clothing brand going. I've seen you putting up a bit of work in terms of um like photo shoot, you know, showcasing different um different clothing like um different lines, sorry, within your brand. All right, so that's really cool. Yeah. All right, so how did you come up with the idea of um about starting a clothing brand or clothing um business? Well, to be quite frank with you, it started back in um twenty thirteen where. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, I used to do a lot of parties, like different um events and so on and so forth. And like at these events, yeah. everyone wore like a different type of um, I would say, urban fashion. Most people would say swag, you know, different cultural names for it and so on yeah. and so forth. So while seeing that, I'm like, you know, I I have this idea with me for quite some time, you know, and it was in 2013 it was when it hit me because being like um exposed to these parties and so on and so forth, these events, mm -hmm. you know, uh it gave me that kind of idea as to, you know, start something and so on and so forth. But um I never really um get the encouragement that I needed because, you know, I was, you know, fresh out the boat doing photography, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, going places, doing my thing and so on and so forth and so on. But it's when I went back to St. Vincent for some time, you know, um I then really take a twist and a turn towards, you know, I mean, developing the brand, starting the brand and so on and so forth and, you know, bringing it out there, you know, to the public and so on and so forth, you know. Mm -hmm. So I I have the brand, I have the brand, but while developing the brand back home, which is in St. Vincent, you know, I decide, you know, to take it to another level. Yeah. You know. So these events really, you know, give me, um, I would say, an encouragement mm -hmm. to really start my brand. Because I see everybody just, you know, in the urban urban fits, you know, yeah, different yeah. cultural fits and so on and so forth. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I want to do this and I, I need to do this and mm -hmm. I have to do this. You yeah. know, this is, it's, it's, it's not just looking at someone wearing a hoodie and a t-shirt and be like, yo, I want to start this. No, it's, it's been passion within me. Yeah. And so on and so forth, you know? 
Yeah. So right then then as mm -hmm. I go back home, as I went back home, you know, for some time. Yeah. Then started the brand and put it out there. Okay. Yeah. Um some things so a few things I like about what you mentioned. You mentioned that you went to like a party or something and you said you saw the way people dress and you were basically inspired mm -hmm. by that. Um so I, mm -hmm. I like the fact that you see something, like probably you see like um maybe like a problem and then you try to get a solution to it and you were inspired by that. The next thing that yeah. I like about what you said is that um on how you got started is that you would have saw it, you were inspired, but you didn't get to start it immediately. But guess what? You never give up on on you know starting it. You just when you got the opportunity or you saw that it was the best timing to do so. Um, which was yeah. when you turned home, you decided that you're gonna start it, which is really good. Another thing yeah. I picked up from what you said is you know, you had a you had a passion. I mean, some people yeah. might get into a certain business um field and they might just do it because they think that they could make a few dollars and so forth. But you know, the fact that you mentioned passion, um, it means that it's close to your heart. So I could always yes. you know, great things coming out from that. So that's really good, man. Um, how did you come up with your your business name because um it's it's gap clothing guap clothing sorry gap clothing yes gap clothing yeah. I realized that, um, <laughs> yeah. I realized that it's an abbreviation and it, um each letter I believe each letter have a meaning based on each part. letter do have a meaning yeah yes, so yes, tell yes. us how you came up with your business name well um while being back home right the first name that I had was um T dot we made it because I was residing kind of at that moment right. Mm -hmm. Um, while living here, you know, um, I wanted something to sound more unique um, towards the country that I'm living in. Yes. You know what I mean? So that everyone could gravitate towards it, you know. But taking a step out of this country and when I'm going back home, you know what I mean, is when I realized I needed a different type of air in my lungs, you know. Yeah. And one day I was home, one day I was home and... I hear a song in the radio station close from my neighbor and I'm, I'm listening to the song and I'm bumping to the tune because music is my passion too, right? I love music bad, but I can't sing. <laughs> I try to. Yeah. Um, while listening to the music, I, I hear the word guap. Keeps, the, 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 the name guap keeps ringing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And right away, I jump on my computer and I, I type up guap and I'm like, you know, I, I see different meanings towards guap and so on and so forth. And in the music, WAP really represents like getting money, you know what I mean? It really represents money and so on and so forth. But I switch it around and turn it into something that's different. Yeah. You know, because I'm a I'm a born well, what should I say? I'm a born hustler. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I, I love working hard, you know what I mean, for things that I wanna achieve and so on and so forth. So um while looking at the name, it it, it, it took me some time to like, you know, come up with each 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 um word for each letters and so on and so forth. And then I'm like, you know, I'm grand with passion, grand with purpose, and grand with this. And then I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Grand with passion song, real fantastic. And I'm like, yeah, grand with passion. Grand with the passion. And when they say grand with the passion, it's like, yeah, grand with the passion, grand with the passion. And it, it has been stuck with me from then until now. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stick with that. And then they, at that point in time, like that's when I started going crazy and looking for a design now, you know what I mean, to um match the name and so on and so forth. So it wasn't St. Vincent I came up with the name. Yeah. Apart from the old one that I had in Toronto before I went back home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Um and, and uh, to me that's really that's really catchy. Um grinding with a yeah, it is. For real. I mean, I'm a um I'm a I'm a Christian, right? Yes. God and thing and you know, even though even though even though um it's not like a Christian brand per se, I could really yeah. do it and I think it's something that I would weigh. Um grind with oppression because I believe yes. in um starting businesses and you know, working hard for what you want and working yes. with the passion. So it's definitely something that anybody could relate to and um I like that. Um the thing about it is sometimes people might do a brand that Cannot really reach to different um different dynamics of people, so it yeah. might be for a particular person. So it's like yeah, you just you can't weigh that because you know are your belief or what. But you know based on the background, are you saying um grind with oppression? You know 
um you working hard for your money and you trying to work hard honestly to to get what you want you know and that kind of inspire you for bring a brand um that's really good man all right so um with that being said and done, I like the way you stated that because that was something that I was looking into. I'm a Christian myself too, as a dentist. I grew up in um yeah. I grew up in a Christian home, you know. Mm -hmm. So um honestly, like when I when I started the brand, I was looking in towards all of that because I, I want everyone to be a part of the brand. I just don't want one set of individuals to be, you know, part of the brand and you know, mm -hmm. one is segregated. And so on and so forth. Like I want everyone to be as one, you know. So mm -hmm. when I thought of the name, you know, I wanted to be something someone could look at me like and be like, yeah, this song amazing, you know, this song respectful and everything like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So with that being said and done, I did a lot of um thoughts towards it, you know, and then I just put it put it all together. Yeah, yeah. I respect that one, I respect that. So uh, one of the things that a lot of entrepreneurs face, right, is that when we start in our farm, um, it's a bit difficult um, getting yes. funds. So how did you raise funds to start your um clothing business? Well, honestly, like sitting here and remembering everything, um, it's like it happened like yesterday. You yeah. Know? Um, as I mentioned earlier, and I, as I started the brand, like getting it from ground up was my main concern such as um the name getting the design towards the name and so on and so forth you know with all of being said and done it's like okay um at one point i feel like i wanted to like you know give up and just put it aside because it's like no one is paying attention to my car no one is paying attention to my cry you know and so on and so forth but one day a friend of mine she came from canada yeah. You know what I mean? She came to visit and she wanted me to do a shoot with her and her family, you know, and she told me, you know, I I brought the ideas to her, you know, I mean, um, my business ideas and so on and so forth. And she's like, wow, this song really amazing. Just as you said, just as you mentioned, yeah, this song really amazing, you know, and she's like, you know what? We're going to make this happen. You know, um, I would have loved to disclose her name here, but Mm -hmm. You know, for privacy, like I won't be able to, you know. Um yeah, she she said, you know what? I'm gonna make I'm gonna make sure see to it that your brand, your brand is being recognized, you know. And she's like she encouraged me, she pushed me, and so on and so forth. And um she funded the business, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Regardless of how many how much money it was or whatever she funded with, she funded it and you know, that's how I was able to start, you know, thanks to her and so on and so forth. You know, I was grateful for that. Um, she led me to a lot of opportunities and yeah. Here is my business today. Yeah, that's that's really good. Um um so my thing is that the fact that you know somebody see you and believe you, I think I think that's really good because sometimes we have friends and they might not be that encouraging towards yes. a yes. business. And for, you know, someone to actually take a chance on you to, you know, invest in what you believe in and, you know, try to see that up, up off the ground to where it is today. So that's really good, bro. Um, And I like that, you know, because sometimes one of the things as entrepreneurs are persons who are consider start, considering starting a business, you know, they think that you have to get the money yourself. You understand? Yeah. Sometimes there's persons that are willing to, you know, to 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 invest in you. Once you believe in yeah. it, are there different avenues of um that you could consider there is a, to get the funds? There is, there is. You just have you just have to believe in yourself, really. You and, have to. Yeah. Um. So, how did you get your first set of customers? Um, I know you're based in Vinci and Toronto, um, Canada. So, how did you get your first set of customers? Well, to be honest with you, I'm quite frank if I speak. Um. Well, while being in St. Vincent, you know, I had to like, you know, put out my brand out there because that's yeah. where my brand started. It was back in um 2018. Mm -hmm. That's when I really launched the brand, you know. Yeah. So what I did, you know, because um I didn't have much funds. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's not even so much about the funds, it's all about like, you know, you know, other people coming together and working, helping you building your brand. Yeah, you know, and at that time there was an agency, a model agency. Um, I think it called Epitome. 
Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I knew, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Epitome. Um, there was quite. A, um, there was a lot of models there, you know. And I used to hang around up that side, you know. Mm -hmm. So I brought I brought the idea to um the 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 model agency um coordinator, mm -hmm. and I asked her, you know, well after bringing the idea to her, I asked her if um um well she can have few for models participating, you know, my clothing line um lunch and so on and so forth and she's like okay no problem um so how are they going to get the clothing you know most of the time clothing brand is supposed to provide the clothing for the these individuals of you know whoever it is yeah but what i did what i did was um i said to each and everyone you know at that time like you know, i mean i'm looking to start you know so yeah. however i'm looking to start uh, and whatever i'm looking to start and you know i gotta just do what i gotta do so I asked um each and every individual who was participating in um the lunch to you know bring forth a white t-shirt, you mm. know, and it must be a new brand t-shirt, you know, and mm. everyone was so excited they didn't they didn't even care if I had to provide it for them they didn't even care that you know what I mean um I had to go to a different printer to get the clothing printing and so on and so forth they mm. they came they came forward within within days. With their white shirt, you know what I mean, um, and that that's what made me so excited even more to like launch the brand. You know what I mean? They give me encouragement to launch the brand as well, and I went to a printer in town, Kingston, mm -hmm. and yeah. I got this. I got the clothing done and set up a date. We did our photo shoot. We did our short clips. Mm -hmm. We went over. We went um different places in town and so on and so forth wearing the wearing the clothing brand so that people can see that it's a lunch and so on and so forth and so on yeah and you know that's how i came about um lunching but when that happened you know a few days after i got a call um i saw your brand and you know because I'm, i've been pushing it on instagram yeah. I've been pushing i've been pushing before it even got lunch i've been pushing on it and after I finished launching, someone called me and, and said, oh, I saw your brand and I love it. You know, how can I get a T-shirt and so on and so forth? And right there, I got my first sale. My wow. first sale. I sold, I sold a shirt for $25. No, 50 sorry. I got my first sale. And what I did was reinvest that 50 into buying different T-shirts and so on and so forth and moving forward. So my first sale was in St. Vincent after the launch of that clothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, very interesting, right? And you know, I'm um, just listening to you. I'm taking pointers and um just analyzing what you're saying. Um for me, just summarizing what you said, right? You said that you know you hook up with a model agency, right? And yeah. you're just starting, you know, kind of limited on funds still, and you you were bold enough. To me, is is a, is a, is a, um it takes a lot of courage because you're mm -hmm. you're trying to partner with, with them. But you know, you're asking them to bring a t-shirt and you know you do the printing. Yeah, and, yeah. Right? That's yeah. a bold step because as you say, most time you're working with like maybe a model um agency, I working with somebody, you know, you had to provide everything, you know, you had to provide makeup, you had to provide this, you understand? Oh yeah. You, you were so bold and you know what you wanted. So you you know, you made that bold step in making those sort of proposal, which eventually um gave some sort of outcome that benefited you you know you got your first sale and you know that's the starting point of it you know the first sale is the start of it which is really cool yes. with your confidence of it um you did the photography for um for those shows right well <laughs> man that's the sweetest part about it um before i even mentioned that um mm -hmm. having that bold step was took a lot of encouragement out of me you know i mean it took a lot a lot of courage sorry not encouragement a lot of courage out of me um I'm taking a bold step, you know what I mean? And as I said, like, if each one helped one, you know? So yeah. they they were willing to help me so that I can help them, you know what I mean? And they're not just putting my brand on the, on, on the line. Like, I'm putting the agency on the line as well, too. Like, yeah. opening up, I open up work for, you know what I mean, these models. So let's say a company see that, okay, you know what? They, they get it, they get it work, whether it's a freebie or whatever. You know what I mean? Someone is gonna reach out to, you know, the coordinator or the manager and be like, Oh, um, can can I have these folks or your models participate in 
you know, this event or that event and so on and so forth. And, you know, right there, as I say, each one help one, you know, yeah. and so on. The, um, the, the, the part I, I like about what you just mentioned is that, you know, even though it's free, because the thing is, sometimes as entrepreneurs, when, when we start out, sometimes we might think that, look, we need to just be selling everything or we need to be charging for everything at the start. Um, but what you did with trying to do something for free and trying to um trying to to collaborate with another business, I think that would have been a, a important point that you mentioned that could assist persons. Because based yes. on my experience myself, I'm a photographer as well, right? Um when I started out, I was doing free stuff. You understand? Ah. Yeah. I'm just building my portfolio, you know, and then oh, yeah. person tell another person, and then it started to spread like wildfire. So you know, you don't have to always start with a sale, but you know, you collaborate, probably do a free work, make people um aware of your brand and what you mm -hmm. do, and then you yes. know, build from there. Um, so what has been um your business um marketing strategy? Um, what platforms do you use to do your marketing on? and um get the word to get the word out there well um first strategy that i use was um as you mentioned mm -hmm. you know uh each one te each one tell one so yeah. it's like okay i use my photography as a way of like um a marketing strategy yeah. so like say when I, whenever i go do um a photography gig yeah you know, i mean i will i will introduce you know uh quite a number of people um, mm -hmm. in the event to my um my clothing brand I would um basically what I do I show them my Instagram mm -hmm. you know and show them that like this is my this is my clothing brand you know and the feedback that I will get from them is epic but I use um Instagram as a way of um as um promoting my brand mm -hmm. uh face Facebook yeah I um I use like um website but my website right now is down yeah uh, i'll mention it as time goes by um you know friends would tell a friend you know mm -hmm. so the word would spread like that and yeah. so on and so forth but instagram is where i use most of the time apart from um facebook twitter i, I just start using tiktok um <laughs> so far so far tiktok has you know you know, show me some promising signs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, I, I started. I, I saw you on um Instagram. That's why. That's why I first um. Yeah. I'm aware of you, and I, if I could, I think I think I definitely could remember um your your shoot in Saint Vincent, and mm -hmm. I could remember the um the model agency. So that that's that's around the same time when I was um beginning to follow you. You know your photography okay. and your um and your clothing line. So you know, yeah, definitely, I definitely could see the presence on Instagram because you have you have a good bit of followers as well. All right, yes, yes. really nice. Um, how many business hours per day do you dedicate to your business? Well, um, <laughs> I should say as a as a full time dad, <laughs> I um, you know, I I dedicate my time to my children like. You know, during the day, when mm -hmm. when they're here, yeah. Um, when they're in school, um, I um, most of the time, like I would do like research. Mm -hmm. I would take the time that they're in school to do like research and so on and so forth, like checking out different ventures. Um, you know, seeing where I can, you know, take my business and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But my real, my real hours. My real hours are in the night when they are sleeping. Okay. Um, I would say those are my quiet moments. Yeah. Because now they're sleeping, there is no noise and so on and so forth. So sometimes you see me from sometimes eight, seven, seven until sometimes two, three in the morning. I'm up still doing, you know, mm -hmm. doing stuff, you know. Um most of the things that I'll be doing while I am up you know, is creating and recreating designs, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, um, trying to fix this structure, trying to get this done, trying to get that done. So it takes a lot of my time, yeah. you know, overnight. 
Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's re that's really an inspiration because um I mean you know some people might be like you know juggling with stuff maybe um kids like you would have mentioned but you know you finding the time uh creating yeah. the time for a family and still creating the time for your business um I think that's really inspirational. All right. Um. So you mentioned about designing, um, chain um tweaking designing and so forth and you know coming up with new ideas doing your research all right um do you you what do you do your you, that suggests that you do your own designs right yeah the first design i um i came up with the concept of it yeah and i showed it i showed it to a guy in toronto that i know mm -hmm. um and he you know reconstructed to a different look the yeah. look that it have now but everything else, I did that. So I, I, I then, you know, took my, well, I paid for it. Mm -hmm. you know? So automatically that's mine. I paid for it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So um, I, I took it and I reconstructed it in the way that I wanted to. Yeah. You know, and I tweaked it however I want and, you know, mm -hmm. to create ideas, you know, different kind of looks, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to attract, you know, different because everyone have a different style, you know what I mean? Sometimes you might keep your design like, okay, to this. Yeah. And be like, someone might be like, nah, that nah, nah too simple for me. I want something big on my chest, something, you know, something like, say, for instance, you know, some people like, some people like it simple. It, some people just like it simple, you know? Yeah. Prefer yeah. it to be simple like that. And some people just like it. Say that again? I look, I look like me. Um, I'm a simple man, so... Right, it's, that's it's so you, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, mean, so. it's not a really plain t-shirt. So you see, like if you get like that, um, sign up by the top, like where you just yeah, show the white one, yeah, yeah. And some uh, people will like it, you know. Some people like it loud, yeah. You know I mean, so you yeah. can see it, even if you're distance away, you yeah. can still see it. You know what I mean? So some people like it simple, some people like it loud, and some people just like it, just moderate. You know what I mean? Not too exclusive and so on and so forth you know yeah, I, saw, I saw you have um, something like vinci colors as well um, yeah 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 yeah. so yeah. i have i have um i have the vinci color man i've been pushing uh, you see the thing is that a lot of people when they start in a clothing brand you know mean from st vincent I, I, i'm gonna base it on st vincent a lot of people when they start their clothing brand from st vincent they normally try to um you know put their their culture, you know, colors in. Mm -hmm. And I commend them for that. You know what I mean? I respect that and so on and so forth. Because at the end of the day, you know, people around the world need to know where you represent, who you represent, and what you represent. Yeah. You understand me? So with me, that's what I did. I I had my 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 Vinci colors because they these colors represent me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I give them a little bit of my home and where I represent and where I come from, you know what I mean? So I have the, the yellow heart to represent a color from the flag. I have the green, I have the, the blue, you know what I mean? So I have it all and so on and so forth, you know, different different printings, um, you know, different designs and so on and so forth, you know? Yeah. As, as I, I'll, I'll show you, um, I have like different... Um, like I, I have different designs, you know. So it's like even if I get, I don't do things like in a rushy, rushy kind of vibe. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, I buy my stuff in bulk, like my t-shirts in bulk. Yeah, my blank t-shirts, and I buy them in bulk. But I would like um, I like pre-order, pre-order the designs. So yeah. I got my design already. Yeah. So I I pre-order my designs and so on and so forth. So let's say someone say. You know what? Me like the short this so. Me want to wear this print here so. You know? Yeah. I I have it. I have the shirt, the size, the color. I have the shirt and the print. So I don't have to like have everything scattered here, there, and everywhere. So everything is just just neat and dandy. You know? It is. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, and something that I noticed about you as well, um, in terms of your brand, um, is that you have um a wide variety of shirt types as well. Because I mean, yeah. some people tend to stick to the more like plain color, but even if we look at the back behind you, we could see you know it had his um striped shirt, 
Um, the, yes, yes, yes. Um, yellow in the back. I, I, I yeah. you have those different one. I you know some people even have just short sleeves shirts. You know, they are I have everything. Yeah, so I, I like the fact that you're diverse in in that sense, and yeah. it's a good look, right? As as we mentioned that, like you know, I have I have I have long sleeve, short sleeve. I have mm -hmm. hoodies, track suits. I even do things for ladies such as panties. You know, I get I got into it. And yeah. so on and so forth. Um, few ladies have had a few panties and so on and so forth. And I'm looking to get into. You know, I'm slowly, slowly looking to get into um female clothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so that I can, you know, take the brand to another level as well too, including for children like kids and so on and so forth. I mean, I have kid clothing, kids clothing as as well, yeah. but like for like different stuff, right? As track suits, sweaters, you know, hoodies. I'm looking to get into that because this place is like a cold place, so you know, most of the time the these kids need these things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Apart from some, apart from summer, yeah. Um. So, do you have like um brand ambassadors, or are you considering to do something like that? I know a lot of persons maybe like try to get like somebody popular in this shirt, or like mm -hmm. probably get this person because we are we're in a, in a social media age. Where there's a lot of influencers or a lot of persons doing stuff, so do you use that type of um a mechanism to you know promote your stuff? Um, you're right about that. A lot of um, like I would say, recognize people on um in Instagram mm -hmm. or social media of any sort. Um, they not so focus on like promoting someone else's brand yeah. unless that brand have like a large following probably or a name for itself uh, you know what i'm saying uh, yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah um i've reached out to some influencers and i would say i would say even if they are categorized on the non-influencers i see them as influencers yeah, yeah like people with like like those that don't have a badge of those influencers that have one, right? Mm -hmm. I, I see them as influencers as well too, and I reach out to them. But you know, most people they are all about the Benjis. You know, what I mean, a matter of fact, I don't mind paying to get to get stuff out there. Mm -hmm. But the turn off is when when they mention it, even before you you mention it, that's mm -hmm. where you'd be like, wow, you know, you're looking to build a brand, you're looking to you know, I mean, put yourself out there and so on and so forth, and you know, everyone is just talking about money, money. So everything these days is about money. So taking a business to another level is, is money, regardless of how we put it. Yeah. You know I mean, but it's, it's how it's been done, you know? Yeah. Um. <laughs> you, you mentioned a lot of interesting stuff, man. Um. Like, for instance, something that jumped out at me when you were speaking is, um, let me say, you know, you approach somebody, right? And they have more mm. followers than you. Yeah, automatically they don't really want to work with you. Um, I've experienced that, man. So, um, when I was starting off this um podcast or this um this show, um, an entrepreneur's journey, I reached out to a few persons. Um, there was one person in particular that I was very interested in because I was following them. You know, they do like motivation and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, boy, yeah, man. Um, I like listening to this person, and you know, I'm following them for a while on TikTok. Yeah following on my Instagram, you know, I reach out to them. They say, you know, they say, well, you know, yeah, it's a good thing, um, support. Well, guess what? They never came on the show. Because, and I figure because they have like about 10K, 10K followers or they have 30K. Mm -hmm. I just probably have like a thousand followers on Instagram and so forth. You know, so, you know, it's based on that sometimes people just don't really want to work with you. Um, Basically, if I had maybe like 50K, I'm sure they would want to jump on. You understand me? But it's all good. So because over time, we will actually grow. You understand? Over time, we'll yeah. actually grow. But we have to always be humble, you know, and I, try to show the love. Same. Share the love about. Yeah. No. No, you see, you see, you see. Uh, you see. <laughs> the thing is, it right? Um. <laughs> It's not even about the numbers more most of the time. It's about the influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about the influence. You could have 10 followers. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But your influence is what's gonna drive people. 
you know, yeah. to becoming better persons, to becoming who they really are want to be, who they really ought to be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter if they have a hundred k, you know, twenty k, you know, thousand k. It doesn't matter. You know, let's say for instance, like me as a business owner with, you know, a thousand followers. I'm I'm pretty sure if I post, you know, something about my brand on that social media, at least five hundred person is gonna see it. They're not gonna like it. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna share it, but they're gonna see it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you're influencing others without even knowing that you're influencing others. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I've seen, see? I've seen accounts, right, with about 10K followers. Um, and they might post a photo and then they only get like 38 likes. I'm like, yo, I don't understand this. Um, You got 10K followers post a photo and only get 38 likes. Um, That's beyond me. Um, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> that's beyond me too i don't understand yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what has been your most satisfy satisfying moment um in your clothing business okay well the most satisfying moment in my clothing brand was during the pandemic time yeah I don't lie. you see the pandemic the pandemic taught me a lot i mean with all these conspiracy and all these you know Bro, that's nonsense. But the pandemic taught me a lot. I'm not gonna lie. And mm -hmm. during the pandemic, it was one of my most satisfying moments. I I sold more clothing than I ever sold in my life before. Mm -hmm. Especially, especially track suits, hoodies, and sweaters. Mm -hmm. I've sold I've sold more than a hundred pieces, you know, during those times. It's like every weekend I have I have at least 20. 20 orders, you know? And it's I'm doing delivery at that time. Like, I'm going different places now. I'm going mm. Mississauga. I'm going Brampton. At that time, it was me and my uncle. So he was driving at that time. So, you know, he was like my main man at that moment, like taking me from places to places, you know, doing mm. delivery. Sometimes we are doing delivery late in the night, you know, just back and forth, back and forth. And, Mm -hmm. I would say that was one of my most satisfying moments. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I'm not. I, I, I'm not gonna say that that should happen. But yeah. if pandemic, you know, something else to happen like that again, I'm, I'm pretty sure. You know, what I mean, um, <laughs> I would have something like that again to lean on and so on and so forth. But yeah. thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. <laughs> some, I mean, some people see the good out of the bad still. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. I think that it would have benefited a lot of persons um, as well. A lot of persons were stuck at home and based on them being at home, it influenced them to, you know, start businesses, you know, maybe evolving stuff that would set them up just in case mm -hmm. something else happened again. So, you know, everybody, um, I, a lot of people, I think, benefited, uh, although some people um would have suffered, but that's the um, nature of the yeah. world, in a sense, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So what what have what has been your worst um experience as an entrepreneur? Uh, hmm. My worst experience um being an entrepreneur is um you know dealing with some customers not only just customers only but suppliers as well. You know, I'm pretty sure you have heard this before. You know. They have a saying that customers are always right about whatever they're saying and whatever they're doing, you know. But you just have some customers just overdo it, you mm. know. They would they would place an order for something, you know, and you will get the correct order. But me, I write down my orders because I don't want to get mixed up with whatever I'm doing. So mm. I would write in, write down your name, and under your name, I'm I'm writing down your orders because at the end of the day. Like, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm correct with what I'm doing, you know. So yeah. when I get that that order for the customer and then take it to the customer and then the customer is like, oh, I never ordered this. And so on and so forth, they have up my money, you know. It, it becomes a nightmare. Yeah. You know? And then you, you start feeling bad because it's like you're wondering where did you go wrong and so on and so forth. And then you have to be with the suppliers now 
Whereas, like, you feel most of the time you're being ripped off because some of the suppliers you go to, they're giving mm -hmm. you different price every time you go to them, you know? Yeah. So if a shirt costs $100, like, you want to stick to the $100. Well, every time you go, it's $101, $110. So yeah. you're asking yourself, like, where you go, where, where are you going wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. So it becomes such a nightmare for you, like, you just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I definitely understand. Definitely understand. I mean, and it, it's it's something that we can't even run from. So, I guess mm -hmm. with time, over time, you actually learn how to cope and how to work around certain things. Um, like you would have mentioned, you mentioned that you wrote down orders. I'm orders. I'm sure that um, when you just started, you probably won't have you know, write it down. You probably might have it in your mm -hmm. phone, but in, in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but now you write it down in a book, you know, book or yeah. and yeah. so I mean over time we definitely grow and we definitely mm -hmm. learn to cope and learn to work around. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because sometimes people might be able to run a circle around you the first time, but mm -hmm. that experience just give you the ability to prevent that um type of thing from happening again, you know. So you're well equipped yeah. for the next time. Yeah. It's really yeah. All right, so what's a piece of advice that you would give to a new entrepreneur or someone who is considering starting a, a new business? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll start by, you know, encouraging that person, you know, um, don't give up. Yeah. Giving up just makes you look weak. And you don't want to look weak. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this with only one mind, you know, if you have something that you're working towards, I mean, do it in silence, yes, but make sure that you work towards achieving that goal. Make sure you work, get night, walk off, walk it, walk it, nonstop. Make sure that you go at it night and day. Because at the end of the, end of the day, when you do, you know what I mean, um, achieve this goal, you know, you're going to look at yourself and be like, wow, thank you, Jesus, I continue doing what I'm doing, you know, don't give up on yourself. I only hear, that don't look good, you know. You know how much time I hear, you know, I, I share my ideas with others while starting my clothing brand and I share my ideas and I'm like, nah, that don't look good, you know. That not ready yet, you know. Mm. And even when I even when I when I started I got nasty comments. Oh, you feel you could start brand and and take over the ball and all them sort of stuff. Those 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 are just to build you. You yeah. know, those, those those critiques are there to, to uplift you in becoming the person you are to become, you know what I mean? So continue to, you know, um, thrive above your own nature, you know, continue to, you know, put your best foot forward. I always have this team in me and it will never leave me, you know. Aim for the sky while reaching for the stars, the clouds. Aim for the clouds while reaching for the stars, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So yeah. you're going above, you're going above and beyond. So you're gonna keep climbing, keep going, you know? Yeah. So if I had studied those individuals that, you know, mean try to cut me down and so on and so forth, I wouldn't have been here today. I wouldn't have been on this interview. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but because but because I I, I am steadfast, still focused, and mm -hmm. you know, keep telling myself with the encouragement of God that you know I mean um this is my passion. This is what I'm about to do. This is this is my love, you yeah. know? So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep putting my best foot forward, you know? And mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And here I am today. Thank you, Jesus, for that, you know? So to anyone out there that's starting a business, whether, whether whatever business it is, you know, you know I say um, keep going, don't stop. And trust me, opportunities are out there. You just got to put your best foot forward in finding those opportunities, getting those opportunities, and just making the best of those opportunities. Opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Like, like you said, don't give up. Um, just keep no. going. Just keep going. Trust me. And that's important. Consistency. 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 Aye. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, so you say you do a lot of research um, and stuff. So what business um resource would you share with um entrepreneurs out there um in, whether it be you know places that they could look for information or they could learn stuff or business resource would you share with them 
well, it all depends on um what type of business they have um pertaining to um my type of business because mine's a clothing brand. You know, I'm always researching about clothing. You know, yeah. researching about how how I could buy stuff in bulk. You know, what I mean how I could um go about getting stuff. You know, what I mean to match my budget and so on and so forth. You know, because with the, with, with with your business, you have to be on a budget. If you're not on a budget, you will lose. Yeah, you will end with, end up with nothing. You know, what I mean, you will always scraping, scraping. So you have to um do everything on a budget. You know, mm -hmm. and manage yourself. Um, as I say, like my resources um might be really different, you know. Um I focus my um uh, my resources my research is more on, on clothing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So um in terms of all of that, like, you know, if do if there's anyone out there that's starting to um you know think about you know starting a clothing brand, I will say um well Alibaba is a good place to shopping bulk mm -hmm. you know what I mean for bulk stuff and so on and so forth um yeah. whether you're in St. Vincent you're in Barbados you're in Trinidad I'm pretty sure if you type up Alibaba on your um your computer mm -hmm. um the price the prices would be different definitely because of the currency you yeah. know what I mean but it, it's it's a it's definitely a good site um the only thing about Alibaba is that shipping the shipping can be <laughs> can be a model yeah you know but it's a really good place to start and so on and so forth and uh, most of the time like with alibaba you don't even have to lift a finger to do any work you just you know I mean? provide them with your design provide them with um whatever um structures you have towards your design towards your brand you know they will put it out together for you for a price or one charge and you can start you know um mm -hmm. start your, your brand from there you know, without even having to like spend that lump sum, you know, in getting stuff and so on and so forth. Because um, when I started, um, you know, it, it did cost. Mm -hmm. Let's say let let's say for instance, you have to find money for t shirt, find money for print, you know, and so on and so forth. So that's two different set of money you have to find and so on and so forth. So it will cost you. But with Alibaba now, it's like a different kind of vibe, you know. You're just paying one price, um, one price for one, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely some valuable um stuff there, like the Alibaba. I think I think it's a valuable resource in terms of yeah. source and stuff, and I think it's very um diverse in terms of like even outside of clothing, um, there's stuff that um that you could use it for because I've 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 used it, I've shared it with um a few friends. They would have got bulk stuff as well. Yes, uh, yes. Got bulk, um, electronic stuff and so on and so yes. it's really nice and definitely a good gym right so hope people yeah, take, yeah, um, yeah. persons listening sorry people listening um take it into consideration and you know check out alibaba as well all right yeah. so you know just wrapping up um where do you see your business in the next five years well uh, that's one of the questions that i'm excited to answer man and I say this with um no water in my mouth. I see my business having its own store in different places, different countries, and so on and so forth. In the next five years, it could be less, you know. But let let let's just extend it to the five. <laughs> I can see my business um you know in different places um around the world, mm -hmm. um and so on and so forth, growing, mm -hmm. you know, and so on. Um, I'm really working, you know, towards all of that. You know, and it's it's one of my main business plan that I have written down that yeah. I'm trying to achieve as well. You know, um, I'll say this: one of the business out there that really, really gave me some encouragement as well is um, Ovio. Ovio. You know, I, I, I mean, there's not a lot of variety when it comes to Ovio, mm -hmm. but just the fact that the brand is like, you know, different part of the city. And so on and so forth. That's really exciting. Yeah. And that's what I would like for my business, for my guap clothing, you know. Yeah. Uh my the the brand is not just just a lifestyle alone, but it's it, it it's a work in progress of encouraging others to, you know, I mean continue to grind with a passion, continue to work towards the goal, 
you know, you love what you do, you do what you love, you know what I mean? And with my team towards all of that is, you know, I'll always strive to be on your, your, your wildest imagination, you know? Yeah. Always, always. The purpose of the grind is to always show progress. You know, you don't want to, let's say, let's say for instance, you go to, you go to, you go to a work, you work every day. You're so passionate about your job. You work every day. But at the end of the week, you come home with no money. That That's not passion. Yeah. No, you, you got to get something to show for it. Yeah. You know, you, you have to. So with that being said and done, it's just like going to school and, you know, not being able, you, the education is there. And you go to school every day to show everyone that you go to school, but then you come out of come out of school without, you know, any any kind of education or something to show that you went to school. Yeah, uh, yeah. This, this is what the brand is all about, you know, you know, mm-hmm. grind with a passion, so yeah. you grind with a purpose. Yeah, yeah. like the like vision that you see for yourself, you know, in the next five years is definitely something that you will achieve. You just gotta keep believing. And keep yeah. visualizing it. You know, you gotta see yourself inside your store. You know, making a sale, and that's really cool. Um, so how can someone get in touch with you if they're trying to reach out? Well, um, I'll say, um, my phone number, uh, WhatsApp, um, Instagram, TikTok. Yeah. You know, I try to keep my business name the same for every social media because you don't want to switch it up and change it and. And all this other stuff. So people, when people do decide, okay, they're looking for web clothing, they cannot find web clothing on TikTok or Facebook, you know. So I keep my name at one at one name. So therefore, when anyone looks for me, it's easy for them or any platform they are on mm-hmm. to find my name and so on and so forth. Um, for WhatsApp number, you can you can catch me at six four seven two three four seven seven four seven and. Basically, like if I'm not sleeping, I'm working, so I'm available twenty four seven. You know. Yeah. Um. Can you just shout out your Instagram? Um. For those um persons that are listening. So for everyone that's gonna um tune in, you know, share and everything like that, you guys can check me out at Guap underscore clothing. Um, for every any social media, any platform of that sort, you can check me out there as well too at Guap underscore clothing uh on instagram facebook or twitter whatever social media it is <laughs> you can find me definitely thanks for that so i'm gonna put those um information um um that you just mentioned instagram and um your whatsapp and tiktok and so forth i'm gonna put those in the show notes in the description below so that person mm-hmm. can just click and they could get to you right all right just want to say thanks um for coming on tonight um i really appreciate it and you know thanks for for accepting all right i'm very yeah. great um so anything yes, uh, well um i'm grateful myself and thankful i've been um longing to do something like this i've been uh, waiting for someone to reach out i reached out to different people mm-hmm. to be aired on their podcast as well too you know um yeah. because i have so much to share so much to give yeah. You know, so I've, I've I've waited and I have done my reaching out as well. But you know, no one have really picked my height and you know show any interest of any sort. So it's yeah. it's like I've been doing my own thing ever since. I made my little post. Um, if you notice under my um under most posts that I post on my Instagram under the clothing page, you would see that I will leave something encouraging or something, you know, pertaining towards the business so that. Whenever you go there, you're just not only, you know, looking at the clothing, you're, you're reading something that, you know, comes straight from my heart as well, you know, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, like, I'm looking to leave a message as well um, while leaving the clothing there as well, you know, so others can look at it and be like, yeah, wow, that's really interesting, you know, because there's something I do on my photography, photography page as well. I just don't post a picture and be like, yo, take this, I took this yesterday. Oh, I took this last week and it's tough. No, I leave something encouraging, something meaningful, so that at the end of the day, end of the day, whenever you you come to the page, you come to you know something exciting and and so on and so forth. So you you're not gonna just leave the way you came. Okay, yeah, man. Yeah. All right. So thanks for that, man. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you for looking at yeah. this video. Really appreciate it. Um.
if you know anybody that you would like to hop on the show with me, you know, you just reach out, let me know, and I'll appreciate that. All right, so goodbye. All right, peace. Peace, people, peace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks, man. Good vibes, good vibes.